Hi there. How does a backwards poet write? In verse. Ah, inverse is another word for backwards or reverse process. So today we're going to be talking about inverse functions. So think of those as backwards functions. We'll see soon what that means. Let's begin with a warm up. To warm up, we're going to look at our composite function writing skills. So we have all these composites and we're going to try to find out what they equal. So try A. Now try B. Now try C. And finally, try D. If you got any of those wrong, please check your work carefully here. All the steps are shown. So take a look. Take a close look. How did it go? All right. One more problem to warm us up. This one's a little different. We have an f of x function given here, and we have an f of x function here. Our goal is to find g of x. That means this function is what we began with, and into it we put a g of x function and the result is this function. So what is that thing that we put into here to get that? Well, here's a process we can follow. We're given that, and we are given that. Now, we can make a substitution. We can say, let's let a represent g of x. OK, so with that, we can say f of a equals f of g of x. Because if we put a into this function, and since we say a is this, it's the same as putting g of x into that function. So putting a into that function is equal to putting g into that function. And we know f of a would just be 2x, sorry, 2a plus 4. Because if we put a into that function, that's what we get. And we know f of g of x is this one. It was given to us. So again, by putting a into here, it's the same as putting g of x into it. And now we know these two things must be equal. So our goal is to figure out what is that a thing that creates this. Well, let's solve this for a. Solving for a, I divided everything by 2 first, and I got this. And then I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, and I'm going to get this. And now I'm back to a. And since we said a equals g of x, that means this must be that g of x function that we were looking for. Great problem, a little bit of out-of-the-box thinking, and it has a lot to do with how we've been composing and, and decomposing functions. All right, let's take some notes on the notes page that was provided to you. Today, we're going to be looking at inverse relations and functions. Let's say we begin with an original function that has these coordinates, and it also has a domain and range given like that. Since this domain and range is given with greater than or equal to symbols, it means that these are not the only points that make up the function, that all points in between them do as well. In other words, they are continuous. So let's find the inverse. Inverse is written like this. Whenever you see the function with a little negative one up there, it means we're looking for the inverse. And all that an inverse is, is when we have a function, we all the x values become the y values, and all the y values become the x values. For example, this first point was negative 5, 0. So on the inverse, it's going to be 0, negative 5. The x value became the y, and the y became the x. Try that for the next point. Well, we get 1, negative 3. Continue on for the rest of the points. There's all the other points. We have found all the inverted points. Now let's plot those graphs. This one I'm going to plot in blue. Negative 5, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 1, 2, 0, 2.5, and 2, 3.5. I'm going to plot this one in, oh, connect those, because we know, again, there's a domain and range that are continuous, so we connect them. Everything exists in between those two endpoints. Next one, plot this in green. There's the first point, 0, negative 5. 1, negative 3, 2, negative 1, 2.5, 0, and 3.52. Connect those as well, because we know they're continuous. Now look at those. What do you notice? Do you notice any interesting relationship between the original and its inverse? Maybe you notice that they are like mirror images or reflections of one another across this diagonal line, a line y equals x. And y equals x because it is a line that has a slope of 1, rise 1 over 1, 1 up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, slope of 1. And there's nothing after the x. That means a y-intercept of 0. So look at that, perfect mirror images. And that is what an inverse creates. When you swap the x and values like we did, we will end up with that happening on a graph. The 1 will reflect across that line y equals x and become the other one. OK, so what is uh, is the original function? Well, yes, it is. We can see every input produces one output. Is the inverse a function? It is also a function. Every input produces only one output. And now, what is the domain of the inverse? Check your work there. And what is the range of the inverse? 
Well, we have that. Notice that the range of the original is now the domain of the inverse. And the domain of the original is now the range of the inverse. Because, again, by definition, in inverse, we are just swapping x and y values. So the x values, the domain of the original, became the y values, the range of the new one. And the range, the y values of the original, became the domain or the x values of the inverse. Remember that big idea there. Okay, fold your paper. Basically, fold your paper along the dotted line, the mirror, and notice when you fold it that the two functions, the inverse and its original, come together perfectly. That's because they're a perfect mirror image. Okay, let's add some notes. So inverse relations, these are the set of points obtained when all x and y values are interchanged, and that's what we're just doing. All right, also, the inverse will be a function if the original passes the horizontal line test. We'll take a look at that in a moment. It is one-to-one, -one, meaning that each x leads to one y, and each y leads to one x. So these are some things we'll look at in a visual form in just a moment. Finally, inverse functions can be written using this notation. And two functions are inverses only if you put the inverse into the original, you get x. Or you put the original into the inverse, and you get x. So when you compose the function, the original function, and its inverse, you always get an answer of x. We'll see how that works in a moment. OK, so let's go with this. This is on your paper. We have a graph of a function. Is the original a function? Yes, it is. Passes the vertical line test. Does the original pass the horizontal line test? So imagine now a horizontal line going across. Does that line hit once or twice? Well, no, it doesn't pass the horizontal line test because if you drew a horizontal line, it would intersect twice. All right, so what does that tell us about inverses? Let's take a look. Is the original one-to-one? -one? And a one-to-one, -one, if you look at your definition, means uh, that every x produces one y. So in other words, vertical line test. But also, every y produces only one x. So that's horizontal line test. So this one is not a one-to-one -one because it fails the horizontal line test. In other words, every y value leads to two x values. Will the inverse be a function? No, it will not. If a function does not pass the horizontal line test or is not a one-to-one, -one, it will not. Its inverse will not be a function. Now we're going to graph the inverse. We're going to take point by point. This is a point negative four eight, so we go eight negative four on the inverse. Or the point negative three four becomes four negative three on the inverse. Or the point negative two two becomes two negative two on the inverse. Uh, we also have zero four on the original becomes 4, 0, and 1, 8 on the original becomes 8, 1. Connect those. You can clearly say there are inverses of each other because if you drew the diagonal line y equals x, these are clearly mirror images across that diagonal line. So draw on that line and then fold along that line again, fold your paper, and notice how your two images, two graphs, will come together perfectly. OK, so some important points here. Um, what is the horizontal line test? Imagine performing a horizontal line test on this original. That horizontal line test, once you invert that graph here, becomes the vertical line test here, right? So when you are performing the horizontal line test here on the original, it is the same as performing the vertical line test on the inverse. So that's why we use the horizontal line test to determine if the inverse will be a function, because again, Horizontal line test here is the same as performing vertical line test here. All right, and one-to-one, -one, well, again, you need to have a function that passes vertical and horizontal so that the original is a function and the inverse is a function. Okay, domain of the original, all real values. Range of the original, y values greater than 1.9. You can see 1.9 here. All right, so therefore, since we swap x and y values, the domain of the inverse will be x values greater than 1.9, and the range will be all real values. And you can confirm that on the graph. You can see it matches. Pause if you need to to think about some of these ideas. All right, here are some examples of inverse functions graphed with their originals. Notice when an original function crosses the line y equals x, the inverse also crosses right at that point. So these are clearly mirror images. Take a close look. 
All right, here's horizontal line test. I'm going to press here. Look, horizontal line always hitting only once. Therefore, the inverse of that will be a function. How about here? Horizontal line, oh, hitting twice many times. Therefore, the inverse of this will not be a function. Over here, horizontal line hitting only once every time. So even though this original function is not, sorry, this original graph is not a function, the inverse of it will be because the horizontal line only hits once. And this last one here, horizontal line always hits only once. Therefore, the inverse of that will be a function. Okay, of these, which ones, uh, which of these will have an inverse that is a function? Same thing here, which of these will have an inverse that is a function? Okay, given this function, is it one to one? Well, yes it is. It is linear, therefore it passes both vertical and horizontal line tests. Every line will pass both horizontal and vertical line tests. Okay, so since we've shown that it is one to one, we know the inverse will be a function, so we can find that. The definition of inverses is you swap the x and y values. So here's our original function, this one. I've written y here instead of f of x, but that's our original function. Now I'm going to swap the x and y. So I'm going to write the inverse by making y is x and x is y. So I've created the inverse already. But now we usually see functions in the form y equals everything. So I'm going to rearrange this to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract y from x. Now I'm going to divide by negative 4 and get this. So that is our inverse function, which we should really write in this notation. So inverse of this original function is this function here. And we found it by just swapping x and y and then resolving for y. That's an important concept there. Make sure you understand that. Okay, so we also learned that when you have two functions, they are inverses when, when if you put the inverse in the original, you get x, or if you put the original in the inverse, you also get x. And that's given here. If uh, you have one function, you put the other one into it, you get x. Or if you have the other function, you put the other one in it, you get x. That's the same thing as here. So anyway, if you put one function inside the other, it gives you x. That will tell you they're inverser, inverses. So given this, let's find the inverse. So there's your original function. Remember, we're going to rewrite it with the y here instead of f of x. And definition of inverse means we will swap the x and y, which I did here. Then resolve this for y, minus 3 divided by 2. So that is now the inverse of the original. And now we're going to, it says, confirm their inverses using the property that we saw here. So by this property, if we take the f function, and so this one, and put the inverse into it, then we have this, because notice this x was replaced by all of that. So we have that. That equals x, because here the 2's cancel when you multiply. And then x minus 3 plus 3 is just x. Now let's try the reverse. So into the inverse, we put the original. So here's the inverse. We're going to put the original function, that 2x plus 3 goes right in there. Here it is. And then these 3's again cancel, and we have 2x divided by 2, which is just x. We have confirmed using this rule that they are inverses. All right, so try this. Determine if these are 1 to 1, and then uh, find its inverse. Try a first. All right, in a, definitely they're 1 to 1. We found the inverse. Check your work there. b, it's not 1 to 1. This one is a parabola. Imagine a U shape. It does not pass the horizontal line test. It is not one-to-one. -one. Therefore, it will not have an inverse function, so we're not going to find it. How about C? In C, uh, yes, it is one-to-one -one because it will pass both vertical and horizontal. If you're wondering how to do that, you can graph these on your calculator and take a look at the graph. Okay, If you graph that one, you would see it passes. And there's the process for finding inverse. Check your work. And finally, D. D is a one-to-one. -one. Again, you can graph it on your calculator to check. And then finding the inverse, check the process, check your work, make sure you know what you're doing. All right, a couple more. Use the composition of functions to show these are inverses. So in other words, you're going to put one into the other and the other one into the other one and see if that rule shows these are inverses. So let's check. All right, so when g of x went into f, we got this. And when f went into g of x, we got this and they both equal x, they are inverses. And there's the answer for b. And one last one. 
this one check your work carefully we graphed it on a certain domain